On Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 85, new strings from a guitar maker that uses whiskey barrels, brothers that sing and play music like brothers, and the single most important mistake that you need to make on your guitar right this very second. All that and more right after this. If you believe that playing acoustic guitar is about sharing the joy of music with friends and family, not just mastering the technical side of playing, then this show is your dream come true. Every Tuesday morning, I give you my list of exciting guitar geek discoveries, gear, and new music so you can stay inspired to live your best acoustic life. I'm Tony Polo Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 85. Please come on in, take your shoes off, make yourself at home. This is the show where I'm gonna talk about acoustic guitar gear. It's gonna help you discover acoustic artists and you're gonna get inspired to live your very best and very boldest acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you my guitar geek list for the week. And this week, we're gonna start things off with something that I feel is extremely important. In fact, it's a mistake that I want you to make on your guitar right now, or I should say the next time that you practice your guitar, because I'm assuming you're watching Acoustic Tuesday, you're probably just relaxed with a nice cold cup of, I don't know, LaCroix, water, not cold whiskey. I like, I like whiskey room temperature. Anyways, that's completely besides the point. Let's talk about mistakes for a second. The single most important mistake you can make on your guitar is exactly that. It's a mistake. Here's the plan. Next time you sit down to play your guitar, I want you to take something that you know very well. It might be a lick, it might be a scale, it might be a song, whatever you're working on, whatever you're very comfortable playing, the thing that you play all the time that you're really good at, that almost feels like you can't mess it up. And I want you to very forcefully mess it up. I want you to force a mistake. If you have to hit the second fret on a string, go ahead and hit the first fret on a string. Force yourself to make a mistake. Now, you might be thinking, okay, Tony, I'm really looking forward to Acoustic Tuesday episode 85, but this is an awfully interesting lesson to start things off with. Well, let me tell you, there's a little bit of story that goes hand in hand with this, and it's, it's quite honestly the most important lesson I've personally ever learned on guitar. Now, the reason I'm forcing you to make a mistake, the reason I want you to force yourself to make a mistake is because so many times, almost 100% of the time, we treat mistakes as these just disastrous things, right? You're playing a song, you make a mistake, and it's like this bomb goes off, and all of a sudden you're like, I don't even know what to do. It's like the mistake almost owns us guitar geeks. Well, when you force a mistake, when you purposefully make a mistake, Instead of mistake owning you, you own the mistake. You take the fear out of it because you know what happens. And more importantly, when you force yourself to make a mistake, you learn how to recover from it. And that's exactly why I'm telling you to make a mistake. So the next time you sit down and play, that thing that you know and love, that thing that's so comfortable, that thing that you can do in your sleep, force yourself to make a mistake. Because number one, it's gonna take the power of mistakes and the ambiguity of mistakes away. And number two, it's gonna teach you how to recover from it. And that is the single most important thing you can learn as a guitar geek. Because I'll tell you right now, there's never gonna be a point in time when mistakes go away. It's part of life, it's part of your guitar journey. So we need to embrace these mistakes and we also need to teach ourselves how to recover. And there's nothing better to teach you than something that you know and love, something that you're super comfortable with, force a mistake and keep playing through it. Because the more you do that, the more that you're gonna take control of the mistake, the more that you're gonna remove that ambiguity, the more that you know what to do when a mistake happens, instead of wondering, oh gosh, what am I gonna do when a mistake happens? Well, you don't have to worry about that because you're practicing it. Now, please, please, let me, let me be clear here. I, I don't want you to be like, oh, Tony told me to just go make a bunch of mistakes. <laughs> that's, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is know that you're gonna make a mistake, make that mistake consciously, and then consciously recover from it. Okay, you, you'll be amazed at how it helps your guitar journey. Now, a quick story to just kind of illustrate this. I'll make this as condensed as I possibly can. 
When I first moved to Montana, I joined a bluegrass band. I was very green. I didn't have a lot of playing experience uh, in front of people. And we were hired or, or kind of booked to do the uh, Music on Main, which where they, they, they close down the Main Street in Bozeman and you play on the back of a flatbed truck and literally thousands of people come out because Main Street's closed, there's food, there's beer, there's all sorts of good stuff. We were hired to play on this stage and I was freaking out. I'm talking major anxiety, worried about making mistakes, worried about making a, a fool out of myself, making a fool out of the band, just looking like I don't know what I'm doing. And I had a friend in town at the time, uh, actually a, a doctor friend that was a great mandolin player, is a great mandolin player, and uh, he's also a, a psychologist, so this kind of went hand in hand. And he said, well, why don't you just force yourself to make a mistake on stage? And I kind of looked at him probably cross-eyed and I said, why on earth would I do that? And he's like, well, you got to slay this dragon. This is like, it, it's better to slay the beast that you know than just be, be handcuffed by this thing your whole entire playing career. So I went on stage at Music on Main. I forced myself to make a mistake. And then I had so much fun making the one mistake, I, I consciously made the mistake again and again to realize, wow, in my mind, I had given the mistake so much power and just by consciously making that mistake, I had very quickly taken the power away of mistakes. That doesn't mean I don't make mistakes. It just means that I react to them much differently now than I did before. And that's something that I want all of you to experience because I think it's a really powerful lesson that regardless of where you're at in your guitar journey, you can do right now and it will open up a whole new door for your guitar journey, a whole new level of excitement and fulfillment and enjoyment. So please give that a try next time you play. Yes, this is me, a guitar teacher saying, hey, go make a mistake. It's gonna be awesome for you. <laughs> all right. Moving on to next thing on the list, of course, very important item of business, and that is Guitar Geek Trivia. Here's your question for the day. Where was Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young's very first public performance as a foursome? Was it A, Madison Square Garden in New York? B, the Woodstock Festival in New York? C, the Auditorium Theater in Chicago? Or D, the Troubadour in West Hollywood? Go ahead and ponder that, and at the end of the show, I'll be sure to give you the answer. Now, before I go any further today, I need, you to I need to introduce you to somebody very important to the show, turning the knobs, flipping the switches, adjusting the focus, pretty much doing all the things that make the show happen. That is none other than Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr. The first, Noah, cheers to you, and good morning. Tony, good morning to you. Noah. As I do in most Acoustic Tuesday episodes, I was going to ask you how your weekend was. Uh -huh. More specifically, I know how your weekend went. I want you to specifically tell me about the cereal that you indulged on. <laughs> because we were riding the same wavelength this weekend. Out of all the things I told you about this weekend, you want me to bring up the cereal. <laughs> well, because you got to enjoy it and I didn't. And I'm, I'm, okay. I feel like I missed an opportunity. Okay, okay. Well... The comment that I made was, we both know that cereal and milk is not the best thing that you could fuel your body with. And it just so happens that because my children do like to eat cereal on occasion, that my wife buys that cereal on occasion. And my comment was, I think she found the best cereal on the planet. <laughs> Uh, it's a s'mores cereal in the generic section. You know what I'm talking about. So can I interrupt for just one second? Okay, yeah. Because I think the generic section, I think a lot of shade gets thrown its way. Yes, that's true. And I think, you know, it's, it's like, well, they kind of look like Fruit Loops, but they're called like Fruit Scoops. Right. Or they're like, they have like the Honey Nut Cheerios, but like they're the Honey Nut O's. Right. Like it's just off. And, and you know, my ma used to get these cereals for me and I would be like, Cool, Ma. When are we gonna when are we gonna go for the top shelf? Because these just aren't cutting the mustard. Right, because but, all my friends are making fun of me. Because, yeah, exactly. Because, because I'm they're... like, guys, I had fruit scoops this morning. <laughs> they're like, look at me, they're like, what the hell is a fruit scoop? You don't have Toucan Sam hanging out with you? Yeah. Uh, but but on that same note. They got cockatiel dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cockatiel Eddie, he's got like a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> hey kids, get get your fruit scoops. Um <laughs> On that same note, 
you can find the occasional hidden treasure in the generic section that's actually better than the brand name. Yes. And I feel like you you have found this pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. I definitely have found this pot of gold. And I want to say, I would like to think that our audience is, they're hip. And so they know, right? They know it's not all about the, the brand name labels, you know, on the top shelf. True. Um, so there's this s'mores cereal. And I don't know how to describe it. It is... <laughs> It's like it's like a dream in your mouth. And as I'm pouring the bowl, right, because I'm I'm like the healthy one, right? I'm the health conscious one. So it's just the perfect timing when I've poured the bowl for me and I think I'm alone. And <laughs> and Heather walks into the room and I'm like this, just about to take this bite and then immediately just you know, have to pretend like I'm crying because <laughs> of what I'm doing right now. <laughs> As she's just like, I bought that for the kid. Oh. Yeah, the kids. Yeah. Um, but I did use almond milk. Good. So good. that's something. Good. That's really good. That's one point in the health category. Anyways, I had a great weekend and I appreciate you allowing me to just go off on a tangent on generic brand cereal. Well, this this started because I came into the studio today and I was like, man, Noah, I just, this whole weekend, all I wanted to do is go and buy multiple boxes of cereal and just gorge myself on cereal all weekend. But you I'm talking didn't. Fruity Pebbles, Cocoa Pebbles, Lucky Charms, <sighs> Golden but you, Crisp. But you <sighs> didn't, right? See, I didn't have a choice because Heather went shopping for the kids and it's in my house. It was forced upon you. It was forced upon I get me. it. I totally get it. Well, Noah, uh, before we go any further today, and before we go completely down the cereal rabbit hole, I'd love for you to give a voice to our Acoustic Tuesday viewers. I know you've been uh, pulling some comments, and uh, just what's going on in the, in the Acoustic Tuesday community? <clears throat> My pleasure. Okay, so up today for comments. I've got three of them for you today. And the first one comes from Robert M. He says, hi, everyone. Robert from Edmonton, Alberta. Ah, Oilers country. 1,050 kilometers or 650 miles north of Bozeman. Mm. Uh, we've been hammered by the cold winter as well, but this week was well above freezing, so stay warm. I'm new to TAC and really enjoying the lessons and the community. Keep up the great work. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it, Robert. And of course, by TAC, he means Tony's Acoustic Challenge. Right, right. Uh, anyone who may be watching for the first time. Uh, next, uh, next comment comes from Tony S. Hi, Tony and Noah. Checking in again from... Uh, Newtown, uh, Powys, Mid Wales, and I probably butchered that. <laughs> pa Powys, your face. you your, can see it. Your little, you? your your shoulders sunk. You're just like, I probably butchered that. Yeah, he, li he, li he lives in this place with the letter starts with P. Um, starts with uh, letter of P. <laughs> okay, letter P. Yeah, and uh, see, I just made an intentional mistake. I just got too close and got blurry. And I'm still going. Good and job. So I'm taking in your, your advice into account. Perfect. So Tony S. Uh, from Mid Wales, I love your shows. It's like being in the coffee shop, hanging out with other guitar geek mates. I love it. Uh, I must give a shout out to my local guitar store, Mid Wales Music. Awesome. And owner, Phil, Mark, and Al. Uh, I've been shopping in that store for over 30 years <laughs> since I moved down here. That's awesome. So that's cool. And our third one comes from Mendez who says, you guys are great, always learning a lot, and always inspiring me to go home and pick up my guitar. Sweet. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Appreciate and it. There's our comments for today, Tony. Well, thank you for sharing those, Noah. And of course, we would invite you, of course, to leave a comment below. If the, um, the spirit moves you, the Guitar Geek spirit moves you, just go ahead and leave a comment below. Make sure to uh, mention where you're tuning in from. It's always cool to see where all of you Guitar Geeks are from. So we look forward to hearing from you. Uh, next up on my list today is something that surprised me. When I first saw this news, I was like, what is happening? I'm gonna introduce to you a guitar company that I would say is mostly known for their electric guitars. Uh, they came on the scene, I want to say about two to three years ago with this, I believe it's called the Little Sister uh, electric guitar. And it is just a gorgeous electric guitar. And I, it's one of the electric guitars that has held my attention for quite a long time because they're just beautifully made. I think a lot of care and a lot of consideration goes into making these guitars. In fact, I specifically remember when the Rialto, which is a concert venue here in town, opened up, uh, one of the concert promoters was there and we started talking. He's like, hey, have you heard of B&G Guitars? 
And I'm like, oh, you are my kind. So we went off in the corner and started talking guitars for about an hour during a Victor Wooten concert. I know, not kind of poor form to talk during the concert, but it was a guitar geek thing. Anyways, uh, uh, we both lusted after uh, the B&G electric guitars for some time. Now I just found out that they are kind of paving new territory and they are starting an acoustic guitar line uh, entitled the Coletta. So made by B&G, entitled the Coletta, C-A-L-E-T-T-A. -T -T -A. Now, <clears throat> This guitar is sits somewhere between a double O and a triple O body size. Now, before I get into any more details on this guitar, I want you to check out just a quick video of their shop. I think the shop is, uh, it, it's kind of cool to set the tone. So let's have a quick look inside the B&G workshop. So now that you see folks actually working on guitars, I wanna talk about the Coletta model specifically. Again, it's, it's somewhere in between a double O and a triple O body size, 12 fret neck body joint, and it, you know, I was trying to find out as much as I could on this guitar before I was telling you all about it. And what I read was that it features a closed, C-L-O-S-E-D, uh, closed X-brace uh, pattern, which, I'm assuming, I couldn't find any pictures or diagrams of the X-bracing itself, but I'm assuming it's a, it's a, uh, um, a shallower angle, meaning that the, the guitar is actually really focused on projection and volume uh, while maintaining a decent bass response because of that in-between double O, triple O body size. Uh, what else? I took a couple of, uh, more notes. They are featuring a, a soft V neck profile on all the necks and a narrower nut width, which I'm assuming is an a, a inch and 11 sixteenths. And now I did not find a spec sheet per se, but I did find these little details kind of uh, through one of the uh, write-ups on their website. And of course you can access that uh, through our show notes. Just go to acousticlife.tv forward slash AT85 to get any of the notes that I'm, uh, about anything that I'm talking about today. Um, now you might be wondering, okay, one acoustic guitar model, what are the different flavors that I can get? Well, uh, good news, they have a slew of tone wood options. I mean, we're talking all mahogany, all the way to spruce top, koa back and sides. They're using uh, Paul Farrow back and sides. There's a whole different uh, a bunch of options. And in fact, I found a great video so you can get a sense of how the tone woods actually uh, relay into the, the sound of the guitar. So let's uh, take a quick look at three different models of the B&G Coletta.
All right, pretty cool guitars. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this because it, it's almost as if, it feels like a, a vintage guitar was almost uncovered here. Um, I'm not saying this because it's modeled after anything specifically. It just reminds me of this kind of uh, turn of the century up through the 30s, 40s build style that it just it just looks cool to me. Aesthetically, they're, they're very pleasing. And tonally, I think you'll agree now that uh, they're pretty darn special. So if you can get your hands on one, I would say definitely check it out. I am hoping to get my hands on one as well because I think it would fit really well. I'm just picturing using it with like finger picks and kind of playing some bluesy stuff that's kind of barky, specifically on that all mahogany uh, model. Anyways, that's my that's my guitar geek wish. So make sure to check them out. Again, go to acousticlife.tv forward slash AT85 to get all the notes and links about that. Now, Noah. Tony, um, can I butt in for a moment? You, you can. Um, can you, can you uh, <clears throat> educate a, a budding guitar geek like myself? Yeah. I've always been attracted to, I, first of all, that B&G guitar, uh -huh. I think looks amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm really attracted to the, the body shape. Okay. I've always, I have always been, uh, had a preference for like parlor guitars as well, mm. but I'm not at that geek level yet. What's the difference between the parlor body and this B&G body shape? So the Coletta is, is bigger than a parlor. And the beautiful thing is, is that they kind of, they kind of, what is it? What do they say? They stood on the fence, walked the line in between, um, you know, that, that comfort of the smaller guitar, the parlor guitar per se, single O or, or kind of a, a size a two, I guess, if you're looking back in kind of Martin, Martin land. Um, and they kind of balanced it between that and, you know, the bigger dreadnoughts or, or triple O's. They put something smack dab in the middle that is still comfortable to hold and on the smaller end of the spectrum, but big enough to produce a bass response that um, is robust enough. And what I love about this guitar specifically is the focus and projection that you're getting out of it with with some bass response so this kind of sits nicely in the center so i think for folks that prefer a smaller body i think this actually fits the bill just as much as it does for folks that like a little bit bigger guitar um, that's without me having any hands-on experience yet uh, but I, I can see i can see the potential of this model and i'm really really excited about it. knowing the quality of their electrics um, I think that will very, very much be carried through on the acoustic uh, lineup. So I'm excited. I'm really excited. I, I'm, I keep pondering and looking at their website and looking at all the options and guitar geek dreaming is, is basically what I'm doing. Isn't there a song about that? Guitar geek dreams? I don't know. I don't know. Beach Boys song or something? Like California dream, guitar geek dreaming? Okay. Something like that. Anyways, oh. moving on. <laughs> Next. Let's, let's have a look at the mailbag. Actually, a pretty fruitful mailbag, if I do say so myself. Um, I first want to say that I got the gig, which is a personal portable guitar workshop uh, made by Dave Thompson. And this is, I'm sorry, Dave Summerfield. Dave Thompson is a... <laughs> Dave Thompson is a bass player here in town. Dave Summerfield is the creator of this personal guitar workshop. Uh, he created a much larger one, did a Kickstarter we featured way back, I think on Acoustic Tuesday episode two maybe. Um, and now he's created a portable version. I got this in the mail. I'm super excited to give it a go. And uh, um, I will of course update you on the process or on the progress of this as well as kind of give you the scoop in a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday. So thanks for sending that Dave. Appreciate that. Dave Summerfield again, I want to be clear. Isn't Dave Thompson also the founder of Wendy's? <laughs> yeah, but that's not who I was thinking of. See, I not only eat s'mores cereal, I also <laughs> just like baconator down. And apparently you know the whole history of the Wendy's restaurant franchise. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting story. <laughs> Uh, next up in the mailbag, now this is one that's super exciting. Uh, some months back, we featured the Lost Dog Street Band and, of course, uh, um, Benjamin Todd. And uh, we also notified you all that there was a Kickstarter going on, and uh, of which we, we contributed to, and uh, it came in. I'm super excited. We got the Lost Dog Street Band hat, the Lost Dog Street Band t-shirt, which I think is fantastic. It's kind of got this like playing card vibe. That's pretty Ooh. rad. And, of course on CD, and if I can get it out of the box, of course, the new album on vinyl called uh, The Weight of a Trigger. Super excited to listen to it, and of course, want to let you all know that it is out, and you should listen to it as well, because I think Benjamin Todd is a, uh, I think he's a treasure of a songwriter. I really do. Um, I think Noah would probably 
hop on that bandwagon as well. Oh, absolutely. I was thinking of uh, the time that he uh, was rolling through town. Yeah. And we tried to work it out yeah. to, to see if we could get him in the studio. And it just, the stars weren't aligning. But what was amazing is that uh, part of part of that was we had to catch him in this right moment because he was hitchhiking <laughs> yes. to like his next gig yeah. out, out of town or something. It's pretty cool. I just, yeah, I, I, uh, uh, I think he's, I really do think he's a songwriting treasure. I think he's some... I, anybody that wants to write songs, anybody that fancies themselves a songwriter, anybody looking for inspiration, I think Benjamin Todd, of course, the uh, Lost Dog String Band, which is his band as well, um, is definite fuel for the fire. You got to listen to him. Street Absolutely. band? Absolutely. The Lost Dog Street Band. You string said... Band. Street Band. The Lost Dog Street. Did I say String Band? You said String Band. God. <laughs> well, I was close. I it's had okay. S-T-R. It's okay. Yeah. Anyway, I... you know, easy mistake to make. God. Lost uh, Dog Street Band. Does the vinyl come with the download code I can get from you? Uh, let's see. Uh, it doesn't doesn't say. Okay. But I, get, I got the CD. I'll just take your CD. Okay, okay fine. <laughs> <laughs> A couple more M's in the mailbag. Uh, we featured Fur Guitars um, a couple episodes ago, maybe a month or so ago. And I had said when I was talking about it, I was, like, I was excited to get uh, my hands on a newly revamped Fur Guitar. So... They actually sent us one. That's which pretty cool. I, I was pretty excited about. This is a, a, a spruce top, rosewood back and sides. I'm not going to get into all the details now because I'll feature it in an upcoming episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Uh, but this showed up, and I'm, I am very, very thankful to the folks at FERC because um, it's not easy sending something uh, overseas. And they just they went for it, and I just really appreciate it. It's nice to be able to get an in-hand... Uh, um, uh, We'll just get an in-hand feel for the actual guitar itself instead of just talking about it and piling together some thoughts from videos. Yeah. And the same is true from the folks at Andrew White. We've had a lot of comments uh, in, in episodes of Acoustic Tuesday saying, hey, have you tried Andrew White guitars? And I, I've had to say no, but uh, uh, they reached out and sent us a guitar as well. So you'll see this on a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday as well. And what I love, they, they have obviously hang tags on their guitars. And... Uh, on the hang tag of the guitar, it just says, have fun, Tony. And I thought that was a cool little touch. So thanks to the folks at Andrew White and, of course, the folks at Furk Guitars as well. Thanks to Dave Summerfield. Thanks to Benjamin Todd and everybody involved in the Lost Dog Street Band. Um, and uh, that's that's it for the mailbag. All small wins. I would consider those. I just talk like Yoda. <laughs> Did you? And I've never even seen that movie. I would consider all of those small wins. And speaking of those small wins... If you've never seen Star Wars, how do you know you're talking like Yoda? Well, I just see things online, you know? I just cobble together what I think Yoda yeah. talks like. Okay, yeah. That's... Okay. Small um, wins do you have for us, Noah? Ooh, okay. All right. <laughs> do we have small wins? Uh, do it, let's. <laughs> All right, Tony, I'm excited about the small wins today, not only because I get to share small wins from Acoustic Tuesday viewers, but um, I also have a small win of my own to share oh. that I want to throw in at the end Okay, okay. Um, that developed within a week's time. Okay, okay. So, okay, without further ado, first small win comes from Ron W. I just purchased a guitar I've been wanting for some time, a Washburn J3. This is an arch top, electric, but also sounds great acoustically. My guitar arsenal is growing, and I will need to submit a photo soon. Ah, I agree with that statement. Congrats on the new guitar. Fantastic. Okay, next one comes from Brandon B. Uh, small win. I purchased a Martin OMC 18E nice. recently at an amazing price. Uh, the guitar arrived Wednesday. It is amazing. The fact that the guitar arrived on the 10, 10th year anniversary of my version of Hitting rock bottom was a nice bonus. Okay. Um, that's an uplifting moment. Yeah, that's super positive. Um, by the way, oh yeah, this is like a this is like a small win with an extra bonus at the end because okay. he, because he threw in a, a you know your guitar geek. Oh, love it. Okay, so slip one in here. Okay. By the way, you know your guitar geek when you miss a first date because you lost track of time playing your new guitar. Accurate. That's Accurate a great. Statement. That's a good one. That's a good one. Very much like you missing dinner with your wife and family because you're correct in guitar land, or just being late. Like literally, can I just quickly jump in? Yes. This weekend, uh, Whitney is out in the truck 
waiting to go to, um, tar- I think we were going to Target, you know, the typical weekend, like we need soap or whatever, toilet paper or whatever. <laughs> And I was working on the tune Texas Gale. It's a flat picking tune. And I was looking at this Brian Sutton lesson and I was just getting it. So she's out in the car. The car, the, the truck is running. She's waiting for me. And I'm just going. And all of a sudden I turn around and she's behind me. She's like, what are you doing? We have to go. And I was like, I just got the part. Cause I was trying to do this all by ear. I had just gotten it. She did not um, understand. Which is fine. Which is totally fine. I, I get I get her side, but it was really important that I was really making some progress. So that's that's yeah. good. That's good. <laughs> what I'm saying is I small I, win for I, you. I, you yeah. get a part. Small win for her. She got you out of the house to the store. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And our last small win here, Tony comes from Michael R. And he says, "Hey guys, uh, life just got so busy last year that I find myself not being able to spend an ounce of time on my personal endeavors. Small win." I made two major changes this year, and the first was picking up my darn guitar and watching Acoustic Tuesday again. <laughs> yeah, nice. Multiple exclamation marks. That's awesome. I'm a bit rusty, and my fingers need some calluses again, but boy, does it feel good uh, holding that guitar in my arms. Oh, man, so that, good for you. So that was a small win, and he shared a little bit more. And he says, also, I'm sorry, Noah, but I started uh, dabbling in the bourbon world. Uh, Tony, I've tried Old Crow, Evan Williams, Old Granddad, and one more that I can't remember the name of right now. It was okay. Evan Williams and Old Granddad are my favorite so far. Okay. I love the warm and mellow versus the bright bite, if that makes sense. Absolutely. I would rec. Can I just have a quick recommendation? Two things. You don't have to apologize to Noah. He's fine. Uh, second thing, uh, if you're looking for something a little bit mellow, you can try the Four Roses blend. Not the single barrel, just the blend. I think I think it's a good priced uh, bourbon that uh, you'll enjoy. Okay, yeah, I think so too. <laughs> those are the small wins, no? Um, yeah, those are the small. I wins. thought you had this this momentous one that you were working on. Yeah, I. Oh, yeah. You're getting there. I'm getting there I'm, now. I'm sorry, I don't want. to So I can under. I can share this because it's not like the kids are going to find out since you know this is going to be aired a little later on. But um, last or, or it was just this last week we were talking about small wins. Um, and the family finally has convinced me to look at adding a dog to our <laughs> to the family. Noah Farmstead to the Mo- Noah Farmstead <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and actually, just found out this morning uh, that our application was approved for a border collie we were looking at. Oh. So we're getting a dog. I think you should. Is it a, a he or a she? She. I think you should name her Getty. Ooh. You know, I was thinking about this this weekend. Yeah. I was like, if he gets a dog, he should totally name her Getty. That's that's pretty good. Even I, if it's I, a her, I mean, I think that would work still. Oh, totally. Right? Getty, yeah. Getty for a, for a girl dog, I think it's great. And, uh-huh. since, and since I'm the one adopting the dog, I should be able to name it. I agree. Okay. So if you guys are keeping track at home, that brings Noah's total to six kids, one wife, three cats, and now a dog. Correct. Uh, any other animals or critters? Not yet. We had hamsters at one point, but there, once the cats came in, that was not a good mix. Yeah, that wasn't a good mix. Yeah, so they, um, they went away. Correct. But I'll keep you posted. <laughs> well, thanks. If, if anything thanks. new comes along. All right. Yeah. Well, Noah, I, I do want to share another small win. This is really a, a Tony's Acoustic Challenge member small win, but it involves you because <laughs> this may be the first time a song was written explicitly about you and uh, I just think it's wonderful. I think it's fantastic. I think okay, Kurt, well, Kurt we, G did a fantastic job on well, this. Well, we were discussing this, and I was I was conflicted inside because <laughs> I wasn't sure if I should have taken this as a small win or not because I couldn't tell. I can't tell if he wrote the song and is celebrating sending me a bottle or if he's celebrating and gloating that he's drinking it without me. I... I can't figure that out. I think we just ride it down the middle and we say, a song was written about you. Okay. We could take the contents out of it. Right. And just take that as a win. Because having a song written about you, no matter what, is, is a small win. In this case, yes. Okay. <laughs> well, without further ado, let's have a listen to Kurt G's Ode to Noah and Whiskey. Hey, Noah. Got your bottle, got them Nico whiskey blues. Hey, no, I got your bottle, gonna drink them blues away. Hey, no, I ain't got no shame when I drink your whiskey. 
get down, So how does it feel to forever be memorialized in song? Wow, that is, I am humbled. I'm humbled and I am, I'm grateful. Noah yeah. had to wipe the drool uh, off the side of his mouth because he saw Kurt take a drink at the end. And he was just kind of, I think that might be eating him up a little bit. Well, I no comment on that. <laughs> I'm not going to comment. I'm just going to say, great job, Kurt. That was awesome. That is now going to be my ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you for sharing that, Kurt. That was pretty darn awesome. Um, shall we move along? Please. Well, this next thing that I want to feature today is, of course, what uh, we're listening to here at Acoustic Life Studios this week. And this comes uh, via recommendation from San Bruno, California. As I said before, California. Um, <laughs> this comes from Vic G. Uh, super, I'm, I'm talking like turbo guitar geek. Just an all-around nice guy and a great Tony's Acoustic Challenge member as well. He recommends that we listen to the Brother Brothers. Now, I had never heard of these two, uh, but Vic says this about them. I became aware of this duo when they opened up for I'm With Her in Stanford, California back in October of 2018. I love their personalities, their story. They're twins from Illinois whose last name isn't actually Brother. It's actually Moss. And of course, they're touching music. They masterfully play a variety of instruments, guitar, violin, mandolin, cello, and their harmonies are dead on. But what's really striking is the sentimentality of their songs and their performances, somewhat reminiscent of Simon and Garfunkel. And after listening, I can say that you are dead on, Vic. So to get us all on the same page, let's listen to their song, Siren Song, real quick. I gotta tell you, the first thing that I thought when I heard these was immediately Simon and Garfunkel. And then I went Milk Carton Kids, and I just thought, they, they just kind of have this beautiful meshing that I think only brother harmonies can have. Now, I know that the Milk Carton Kids aren't family, and I know that Simon and Garfunkel aren't family, but uh, I feel like the Brother Brothers have this other thing. We'll call it an X factor, if you will. Love the instrumentation. It's so cool because it's so diverse. And I love the the subtleness of it. I think that's that's one of the things that really sets this band apart or this duo apart is that the harmonies and the songwriting are really front and center and the instrumentation is there just to kind of flower up the song. And uh, I really appreciate their reverence for the song. So uh, let's actually listen to one more tune by them uh, entitled Red and Gold. Red and gold, that's my name And I'm there on the end of each and every day Blue skies and rain, clear and cloudy days I am there, come and find 
right, so again, as Vic mentioned, I'll reiterate, uh, the Brother Brothers are made up of David and Adam Moss. They're actually identical twins. And uh, as you could tell, uh, the harmonies are just dead on. As Vic said, I'll just reiterate it. Um, if you're wanting to hear more of them, uh, they have two albums out. Uh, first release in 2017 was the Tugboats EP. And then uh, the follow-up to that was released in 2018, and that's entitled Some People I Know. And I just, I actually just in some quick research found out that Siren Song came out February 22nd of this year, I think. Uh, so it's a fairly new single from them. Uh, so pretty, pretty excellent duo that you need to know about, especially if you love acoustic music, especially if you love harmonies. Now, moving on, Noah and I always want to know what you think of the show, so please, in the comments below, let us know. Include where you're tuning in from. If you have a small win, put hashtag small win. If you have a you know you're a guitar geek when, put hashtag you know you're a guitar geek when, and go ahead and finish that statement. We absolutely love hearing from you. We really appreciate you all taking the time uh, to say hello and uh, um, let us know that you're watching in the comments. It's really cool to see, and it feels like, uh, it feels like well, it feels like we're connected on the guitar geek dimension which rises above all other dimensions. It's a, it's, Noah knows more about it because he's into sci-fi. It's important. Oh, man. That, <laughs> boy, did that trigger something in my mind. <laughs> what? So I just have to. Okay. So I, I try to take turns with the kids, you know? We almost have like a schedule. It's like, yeah, I got Friday with Dad. And, you know, this one's got Monday with Dad. So uh, me and my, number four, right? So me and Heinrich go out for a walk and we're walking and the snow's starting to melt there's a lot of puddles he starts talking about it and brings up this conversation about what if puddles are another dimension oh and looking at ourselves he goes off on this whole thing on just like there's another me on the other side of the puddle looking at me oh and he's eight years old and we're talking about multiple dimensions dude which makes me remember something it's just all circling around right now whitney and i went out this last weekend and we saw us the new mm. jordan peele movie yep which is essentially a family goes on vacation and then there's a carbon copy family that's kind of like twisted Whoa. it's a horror movie i love horror movies by the way um it's fantastic I don't know if it's another dimension. It's kind of another dimension thing. Yeah. But the reflection thing plays a part in the movie. Maybe when did you didn't, when it did, didn't really pack the impact that I hoped. When did you text me? Was it right after you saw it and you're like... Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. yeah. I just can't believe that Jordan Peele is so amazing. He is just home run after home run. Get Out was an amazing movie. Us is awesome. Isn't he doing something with the Twilight Zone? Like a new version of the Twilight Zone? I have no idea. Huh. But yeah, I... I I need to probably watch. It's difficult for me to watch movies these days. I get it. I yeah. get it. It's okay. Okay. Um, uh, so, yeah. I, what was I saying? Something about leaving comments? Yeah, we want, we want to know. What's yeah. your favorite horror movie? Go ahead and throw in the comments. <laughs> yeah. out. Um, but while you're leaving a comment, please, uh, if you have not subscribed to the Acoustic Life YouTube channel, please do so. It's super easy. Hit that red subscribe button, and then don't forget to click that little gray bell. That'll give you a notification of each and every new video that gets released, so you don't have to fear missing out on any of the guitar geeky goodness. Now, uh, on that same token, I want you to please share this show with your guitar geek friends. Uh, the whole point of Acoustic Tuesday is get to get guitar geeks together every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, and... Just get together and wave our Guitar Geek flag. Just be Guitar Geeks. Be happy and celebrate our own guitar geekiness. So please share the show with as many Guitar Geeks as you possibly can. We'd love for more viewers to get hip to the Guitar Geeky goodness that happens every Tuesday at 10 a.m. See what I did? I wrapped in the airing time two times in that. 10 a.m. on Tuesdays. 10 a.m. on Tuesdays. What? Lots of teas. When is it, Tony? It, well, I'm glad you asked. It's 10 a.m. on Tuesdays. It airs on YouTube, okay, and that's it. 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Okay. Uh, Noah, do you have any? Did you pull any? You know your guitar geek wins? I did. All right. Um, so I snuck one in before, right on the on the you small win. Sneaky wind. little devil. Yeah. So you're gonna yeah. get four today. Ooh. Well, that one included. Okay. Here's three more for you. Bonus. Guitar geek. You know your guitar geek when Dave S says, you know your guitar geek when the microfiber cloth in every guitar case matches some feature or highlight of said guitar. Wow. That is, that's a level of geekiness that is extreme. Yeah, I would say so. I love that. Um, next one comes from Sharon T. You know your guitar geek when you buy a new car and set the budget based on the anticipation that you will still be buying a new guitar. <laughs> yeah. Now that's proactive thinking. 
Because you don't want to get the car and be like, oh, the, I guess the new guitar is out the window. Here we have a professional Guitar Geek budgeter. There you go. That factors it into the purchase of a new vehicle. And that's the best. Gosh. Yeah. Because Love then... These are, these are life tips, people. See, well, because then <laughs> it's just better. I was a person who was afraid of the numbers at one point. Uh-huh. But once I realized that doing so enabled me to then buy said new thing. Yeah. And enjoy it like a new thing and then not worry about the numbers part. Yeah. It's fantastic. Man. I love it. Okay. And uh, this last one comes from Michael R. You know your guitar geek when... <laughs> <laughs> the first line. You know your guitar geek when you kick your wife out of the bed so you can use her pillows as guitar neck support while making your updates, cleaning, restringing, and watching <laughs> Acoustic Tuesday on the TV. <laughs> Boom. That's what he says. Boom. And then in parentheses, don't worry, she was leaving the bedroom anyway. I didn't actually kick her out. <laughs> I kind of have a you know your guitar geek when. Okay. But it doesn't really, it's just an incident that happened. So what, well, so it, what category it, it, this This weekend was pretty eventful, okay? So Whitney went to, she went shopping at some point to get some house plants. You know, spring's kind of in the air. She wants to green up the place a little bit. Yeah. She bought these hanging plants. Now, as as a responsible guitar geek, I've been really being focused on maintaining proper humidity on my guitars. Uh So I have some hanging guitar stands in the kitchen, which is like one big room. It's not like, you know, guitars are in the kitchen, but... Effectively, guitars are in the kitchen. And well, the, those wall hangers, are they've been empty because the guitars have been living in their cases. I knew it. I knew exactly where you were going. So what does she, what does she decide to hang the hanging plants on? Yeah, I know. My wall hangers. Yep. I was appalled. Yep. She doesn't see it the way I see it because they're still there. She won, basically. <laughs> but I have okay. the sun working towards me because they're not going to get any sun with where they're at. Well, if you think about it like this, okay, let's spin it positively, um, right? So to be, oh, this better so, be good. so the first thing is to be fair, you didn't currently have guitars hanging there. Yeah, but okay. how like Wait, just just here's the other way to spin it. It's still pretty guitar geeky to hang your hanging plants from guitar hangers on the wall. True. That's pretty geeky. So I think like unconsciously, I'm getting in her head. <laughs> and check this out. Oh, oh, you're not giving her a choice. Check this out. So Whitney really wants to go to Vegas for her birthday. Her birthday is in the beginning of September, and uh, I just I, Vegas is not on my list of things to do. Like I would totally be down if she was like, "Hey, let's go to Nazareth. Hey, let's go to uh, the Taylor Guitar Factory. Hey, let's go visit the guys <laughs> at Bourgeois." Yeah. Hey, can we go to Sisters Oregon and visit the folks at Preston Thompson? Yeah. Like, if she said that for her birthday, I yeah. would probably faint for her, for her birthday. Yeah, but she wants to go to Vegas, so we we booked a flight with the family, like the brothers, the sisters, the spouses. Everybody's going. We're gonna have a fun time. And after you calm down from throwing a fit, a hissy fit, I did, and I did. and all this stuff, I had to immediately figure out what I was gonna do in Vegas because Correct. it wasn't gonna be the touristy things. Mm-hmm. Guess what's in Vegas? Heartbreaker Guitars. Boom. Guess who's going to go to Heartbreaker Guitars? And Not guess, Whitney. guess who already planted the seed? I said, you know, Whit, when we're in Vegas, I'm probably going to get a new guitar. And she's like, okay. I don't... Is that planting a seed or is that just like planting the full-grown Well, thing? it was kind of I'm testing the guitar. waters. Okay. I figured I'd just start... I'd shoot high and see what her reaction was. Okay. She said, okay. So I don't even feel like I have to bring it up anymore. Are you going to get a mandolin there? No, I've been really, I've been really looking at Loudons. A lot. Yeah. Which I've been is looking, actually an uh, item coming up here. Well, but. I've been looking at Bushmills. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> this is almost, you know, Acoustic Tuesday has developed into a um, somewhat of a therapy session weekly therapy session <laughs> yeah. which we appreciate you all being a part of <laughs> yes um let's head to arizona shall we let's do it okay oh whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. what did, not, did i not, oh are we going to arizona we're gonna go to arizona first oh, okay then nevada 
Oh, see, I that was a goofy segue, okay. what I did there. Sorry. I'm still going to Vegas. I'm not driving. I'm flying. Okay. Hopefully, Heartbreaker Guitars ships. I'm pretty sure they do. Uh, Brendan, I'm coming for you. Uh, Brendan's the owner of Heartbreaker Guitars, and I know he keeps a good stock of Loudons, so I'm really excited. Anyways, I want to look at a guitar snow. The guitar snow is located in Arizona. Uh, uh, Chandler, Arizona, to be specific. It comes courtesy of Bob D, Acoustic Tuesday viewer and overall guitar geek. As you'll see from his guitar small picture, he says this, I took the picture two months ago. I finally got around to listing and describing my guitar small. So here goes nothing. Left to right, a 1962 Gibson A5 Jethro Burns mandolin, a 2000 Melancon Pro Artist, a 1997 Fender Cunetto Relic 60 Strat, a 1997 Fender Deluxe Jazz Bass with Sur Active Electronics, a 2008 Martin HD28, a 1969 Gibson B15, a 1932 National Triolian, a 2015 Martin CEO7, a 1940s Martin Style II Baritone Ukulele, a 1939 K Archtop, Solid Spruce Top, and Solid Flame and Bird's Eye Sides and Back, uh, unknown model on that one, from Romania, a Nilling Violin, a 60s or 70s Japan Lawsuit SG Bass, a 2004 Deneve Custom Made Dobro, which is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, flat on the floor, we have a Hamer guitar. Uh, and then on to the Fender amplifiers, a 1966 Princeton Reverb, a 1962 Tremolux, a 1961 Deluxe, and a 1960s Premier Reverb unit. And we can't forget his best bud and audience pleaser, Samson the Dog. Now I will have you notice there is a little bit of an Easter egg in this guitar signal picture because I'd like to think this is how Bob watches Acoustic Tuesday. iPad perched upon all of his amps, behind all of his guitars, just, just basking in guitar geek glory. That's what I'd like to think. Yeah. Do you I, think that's the case? Well, I just want to say that I I noticed the Easter egg. You did? Yeah. I didn't. Noah was like, did you see the Easter egg? And I was yeah. like, what are you talking about? So yeah, sorry, so, I didn't I didn't want to steal your credit, but I But I, did. I don't but I don't think he uh I don't think he watches Acoustic Tuesday like that, no. You don't? I don't, I don't think he puts out all his guitar signal and then I bet you he pumps it into the big screen TV. There you go. He's probably got a movie theater. Apple T V. Yep. Yep. I'd like to have a movie theater. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Should we, we got, I got one more item to share with the guitar geeks today. Yes. And this this item comes from Across the Pond, brought to you by a guitar maker that has used whiskey barrels in the past. Yep. Well, and I've talked about Loudon guitars earlier. I didn't realize I was making this connection. But um, I am I am actively lusting after a Loudon, uh, among many other, I mean, laundry list of guitars. But the closest I could get at the, at, at the present moment was trying out the strings that they just released. Now, I believe at the NAMM show this year, Loudon released or announced the fact that they were producing strings. They uh, come in this beautiful package. Uh, more on that in a second, but first, here's a little promo video that they did, kind of showing the six different gauges and kind of, I don't know, making them look ultra sexy. So let's have a look at the promo vid. They've arrived. Here at Loudon Guitars, we're delighted to reveal our range of premium guitar strings. These acoustic-treated phosphor bronze strings feature a rare balance of warmth and clarity and are designed to enhance the true character of every guitar. Available in a choice of six gauges, including extra light, light, light medium and medium, as well as baritone and dadgad. The exceptionally thin treatment draws out the natural voice of the instrument, whilst providing the player with a traditional feel and extending playable life. Loudon Guitars, the right strings reveal the true character of your guitar. Okay, so as I mentioned, the packaging is awesome. Uh, that, that has nothing to do with the strings themselves, but it's, it's nice to get a package that looks good, especially when you spend, you know, 25 bucks a set on a set of strings. Uh, it's got this nice kind of soft matte feel. But anyways, you open the packaging, the strings come in a corrosion resistant, resistant bag, which I thought was pretty awesome because you can buy the strings, sit them on the shelf, don't have to worry about them corroding at all. Um, 
And then at first, when I opened these strings, I saw the colored ball ends and I thought, I wonder if Diodario's making these strings. I'm sorry, Diodario. I wonder if Diodario's making these strings for, for Loudon. And then I went on this like whole black hole search of trying to figure out who made the strings. And then I kind of got to this point where I was like, who cares who makes the strings? Do they sound good or not? And that's kind of where my search stopped. Um, so I do know they're phosphor bronze strings. I do know that they're treated strings. And what I've found is that the strings are this wonderful, delicate balance between offering a full bodied string with nice warmth and also this great string to string balance. Now I chose to try these strings out. I tried the medium gauge strings out on my custom Martin, which I'll tell you the specs on here in a second. But I think the strings themselves are just a beautiful sounding string. They bring out the body of the guitar, but again, there's this clarity from string to string. There's enough string to string separation that I think each string is, is allowed to speak nice and clear, but um, not in a brash way. mid-body that, that they provide. So I'm pretty pleased with the strings themselves. Uh, again, as I mentioned, they're, uh, they're about 25 bucks a set, including shipping from across the pond. So they're not a cheap set of strings, but do I think they're worth experimenting with? Absolutely. Uh, I think, you know, in, in terms of strings, yeah, they sit on the higher end of the spectrum in terms of price, but I would say that these are worth trying out on your guitar. It might be a great combination. Um, I think they're a really good fit for this Maple Martin. Uh, the Martin that I was uh, playing those on has an Italian spruce top, bird's eye maple back and sides. You guys should see this because it's really beautiful. This is a custom OM. I get a lot of questions about this guitar. Uh, custom headstock. It's got Waverly tuners and just a just an all-around killer guitar. But I feel like the Loudon strings are a great match because with Maple, there's a tendency for me to throw on, like if I throw on new Elixir strings on this guitar, it'd be very brittle and harsh sounding. Uh, whereas I feel like the, the Loudon still allow me the clarity, but not necessarily sacrificing that clarity for warmth. I think it's a good balance between the two. So I wanted to mention that uh, to you all because I think they're rad strings to check out. You can get them on the Loudon Guitars website. It's loudonguitars.com, or you can visit acousticlife.tv forward slash AT85 to again, get any of the links for any of the things that I'm talking about. Uh, they have some really cool sets for um, a baritone guitar, dad gad tuning, uh, light mediums, mediums, extra light, light, you name it, they got it. Um, and uh, there was another thing I was gonna say. Oh, uh, what, I, what I noticed with these strings is that they're actually, um, I think considerably longer than a standard set of strings in terms of actual length. Uh, so if you have a longer scale guitar, I think it'd be a great fit for those as well. So just wanted to mention that. Again, those are Loudon guitar strings. Uh, pretty happy to uh, try those out. And of course, maybe in the future, I'll get a Loudon. We'll see. We'll have to do a follow-up after my Vegas trip. Maybe I'll actually do some videoing on my Vegas trip. Yeah, That'd I don't be something, huh? I personally, I don't think it's a maybe. I'm pretty confident that you will probably come back with a Loudon. I'm just going to say that now. Well, I keep watching Brendan's videos. You know, it's like they're showing all these. They had this loud and jazz model in there that was awesome. Um, I, they had a signature model that I was like really keen on. I don't know. I just, they all start blurring together. I but. think you should get the Black Bush. You think? Yeah. The one with whiskey barrels? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Well, I mean, if, I, if it's there and I try it out, you never know. Okay. Boy, that'd be something, huh? Yeah. That'd be a good good whiskey guitar crossover. I know. I love it. Well, Noah, should we wrap things up? We got uh, Guitar Geek trivia. I got I got to we got to reveal the answer. But first, let's do a quick uh, uh, recap of the question. Here was your Guitar Geek trivia question. Where was Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young's very first public performance as a foursome? Was it A, Madison Square Garden in New York, B, the Woodstock Festival in New York, C, the Auditorium Theater in Chicago, or D, the Troubadour in West Hollywood? Well, if you answered C, the Auditorium Theater in Chicago, you are 100% correct. After releasing their first album, entitled Crosby, Stills, and Nash, as a trio, in May 1969, Neil Young obviously later joined the band, creating a foursome. Their uh, the, restructured, the restructured group embarked on a four-leg, 39-day tour that ended with three European concerts in January 1970. Their very first gig was on August 16th, 1969 at the Auditorium Theater in Chicago with Joni Mitchell as their opening act. They mentioned that they were going to someplace called Woodstock the next day. 
but that they had no idea where that was. Their one-hour second show in the early morning of August 18th, 1969, was a baptism by fire at the Woodstock Festival, and for any of you who have seen the footage, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Stephen Stills makes a very um, wonderful comment about them being scared because they're playing their second ever gig at Woodstock. Their appearance at the festival and in the subsequent movie, along with recording the Joni Mitchell song Memor Memorializing Woodstock, boosted their visibility as a full-on quartet. And with that, Noah? Yeah. We've, we've dressed up Acoustic Tuesday episode 85 quite nice. We've affixed the cummerbund, made sure the vest was in place, mm -hmm. the boutonniere pinned on, yes. the corsage gently placed on the, um, the potential mate's Wrist, yes. Limos parked outside, ready to whisk Acoustic Tuesday '85 away. The clip-on bow tie to is... a, to a fun night at, prom, at the prom. <laughs> Hopefully, vying for a spot as prom king. Mm. You're so good at these. <laughs> I just I don't even want to try. I like the clip-on bow tie because okay. that was very me. I went to a prom. I went to a prom once in high school. I think I was there for five minutes. Mm. Irrelevant, really, completely irrelevant, <laughs> actually. Uh, how about we take a sneak peek okay. into next week on Acoustic Tuesday? Uh, <laughs> you all right? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, next week on Acoustic Tuesday, we're going to listen to a singer-songwriter that has both Noah and I 100% flipping out. Uh, no joke. You're going to need to tune in next week to hear who this is. Uh, you're going to actually, next week on Acoustic Tuesday, you're going to see how much crossover there is between guitar, hockey, and bourbon and you're going to find the right string gauge for your acoustic needs. So make sure to tune in next week on Acoustic Tuesday. And if you're wondering when you can catch Acoustic Tuesday, you can catch it every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time on YouTube. And of course, for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, please visit AcousticLife.tv, where you can do a deep dive on anything we've ever featured. All the show notes are at AcousticLife.tv. And uh, with that, we'll see you next week at 10 a.m. Mountain Time on Tuesday for Acoustic Tuesday. We appreciate you sharing your time with us today. We appreciate you as Guitar Geeks. And of course, remember, Guitar Geeks Unite. Cheers. Have a great week.